I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today is an Olympic icon. This woman has 12 Olympic medals. She's the oldest woman to make in a, a U.S. Olympic team in swimming and medal. And uh, we all know who she is. This is Dara Torres. Hey, Mel. How you doing? <laughs> talk to you i'm just like i'm on it i'm, I'm, I'm yeah well Love i'll that. talk to dara you know you know what's funny is that everybody knows you and loves you and you have such a huge footprint in the olympic movement and uh so i i guess you, a lot of your your time is stressed a lot of people want their dara moments is it, does it feel <laughs> like that during a summer like this you know, it uh, it was going to be a lot more busy if it was a year ago with no pandemic. Uh, I was supposed to go to Japan, do lots of appearances, go to the swimming, take clients around for different companies. And then obviously the pandemic changed all that. And so this year is a little bit different. I actually have a little more time to vacation because I'm not going to Japan. Things aren't happening there. I mean, I was talking to uh, Caleb Dressel's mom and she was trying to figure out a way to get there because the parents aren't supposed to be going. So um, I think there's a lot of people who are bummed out about it. I, I feel personally bad for the athletes because, you know, when you go to such a big stage like that, it's the aura around you that really kind of hypes you up and gets you going. The crowd, you know, your teammates, the chanting, and like everything gets you going. And these poor kids have to quarantine and they're not going to have, you know, their families there watching. And it's just going to be a very different atmosphere for them. And I definitely feel for them, even though it's Olympic Games, I definitely feel for them. It is. Um, I didn't see you at U.S. Trials. Were you there? I was not there. I was supposed to go, and I was supposed to you call me out now, aren't you? I was uh, supposed to go give a medal uh, one of the nights, and um, I had gotten asked to go to Mexico before I knew that this was going to happen. And I decided to go to Mexico and not trials because I hadn't gone on vacation for a while. So I, I haven't had personal. I did watch it. Well, actually, I was in Mexico and I had to look online because they don't have NBC. They have CBS and ABC, but not NBC. And so I was trying to stream it and I couldn't get it on stream. And so I had one of the announcers um, for the Wave One trials, Patrick Kinas, uh emailing me or texting me what all the results were live. So I knew what was going on. So I only got to watch maybe the, the, the 50 freestyle, like the last day of day eight. So. Yeah. It's a, I haven't had a chance to, to catch up with you. It was um, I've gone to everyone in Omaha since 2008. It was different, you know, in, in eight, 12, 16, it was uh, the, you know, the sound was so intense. You, you could try to, you could scream and the person, you know, the person next to you couldn't really hear you from just, they were drowned out. This was a little sleepier. They woke up a few times, no world records, a lot of young talent um, stepping up. So the pandemic, the extra year of pandemic put uh, the younger swimmers, the, the rising stars benefited. And I, so you, you had to have a lot of friends who missed the team. Uh, did, did you go through any, any emotional unpacking? Well, you know, you definitely feel for them. Uh, <clears throat> I know after uh, my missed Olympic trials and uh, Olympic team in uh, 2012, you know, you, you definitely have emotions that are still inside of you. It's not something you just don't get over when you're training your whole life for that. And yes, I know I've gone to five, but you know, each one is a different experience and a, and a new experience. And so when I saw like Nathan Adrian, not, not making the team and a couple others, you, you definitely feel for them. And, and, and you know that, you know, as much as they're being, um, what's the word, like friendly and kind towards your competitors and, and showing that sportsmanship, you know, deep down they're really hurting. And, and that's kind of the way I was like, I was very happy for the people who had made the team and, you know, was smiling and everything, but deep down I was really hurting. And you know, that some of those summers that were expected to make the team that thought they were going to make the team uh, were going through the same emotions. Yeah. It was particularly hard to, to see, you know, a sprint brother of yours, Nathan Adrian, get third, and uh, you know, and talking to a lot of the athletes, they were they were they were upset about that. And, but they, but you know, at the same time, their 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 opinion is, it's a brutal sport, and you have to also appreciate the 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 time that's been invested and, and all the great swims in the past. And this is just another chapter. It's a chapter where we close the book. 
That's uh, hard to say. <laughs> that sounds so kind of like, I don't know, <laughs> from the brutal. script. Yeah, it is. It is brutal. But, you know, I, I mean, that is true. But, you know, I, the pandemic really wreaked havoc on people. I mean, you didn't, like you said, you didn't see any world records, but you also have to remember that some people, if they know they have a great shot at making the team, may not be tapering for this meet as much as they would be for the Olympic Games. So that might change by the Olympics. But, you know, when, 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 you, when Rio happened and you have to reset for the next four years and you have that plan and you have that goal, and then all of a sudden, you know, four or five months before, trials, everything gets shut down and you have to sort of refocus and, and re put goals out there. And it's not easy, especially for the older swimmers who like had planned that. And then they have to go through a whole nother year of training. That's not easy on someone who's older and trying to let their bodies recover. Um, you know, it's just another year added onto your life that makes it harder to recover. Yeah, it's tough. Uh with trials, the, 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 the drama was at the front end. And, and what's it's interesting is that you were out of the country. You weren't watching our, our buddy Rowdy. You weren't, you weren't here on the call. You were, you were reading about it, which is so fascinating. But the, you know, it was, it was Simone Manuel didn't file in the hunter freestyle. I know. And that's why I couldn't wait to get back to watch that last day. Yeah, it was. It felt like the entire arena, as even though people were spaced apart a little bit, I would say we were about 50% full. It felt like the entire arena, everyone was holding her heart before that that final 50 final. And uh, it was a pretty emotional moment. I, 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 did, what did you feel? I, I mean, my daughter Tess and I were, were in the living room watching it, and we both were just cheering for her. I mean, mind you, we like all the swimmers in, in, in there, but there's, you know, she broke my American record, and she's someone who, you know, I definitely admire. And, um, is really paving the way for for other African American swimmers and and um, you know to see her swim that race and you saw you know how she swim and and then at, I'm like oh no she's not going to get it oh yeah she's going to get it and then she just at the end just pulled ahead of everyone and um, it, you could just tell that as much as you just said what the crowd was feeling what everyone was feeling you could see the relief in her too. And it was just like, oh, thank God. And then my first thought is like, oh my God, she must be so psyched. She's only swimming one lap. <laughs> um, I love that. It's, it makes it a little easier to train and maybe that will give her a little more confidence because after reading what she's been going through and the overtraining uh, that she's been having and just her body not recovering to know that she only has to swim a lap. I mean, I remember as far as the guys go, I, I mean, I, I swim a little bit more, but I remember the guys would like wake up super late, come in for only an hour while everyone already been in the pool for an hour, you know, the male sprinters and, you know, knowing that they only have to swim a, a 50 freestyle. And so maybe this will give her a little confidence, allow her body to rest these next five or six weeks for the games. And, and, you know, she may, may, she may be strong in that event, like very strong, even though there's some the times around the world have been a little bit faster. Um, you know, I was fifth going into my fifth Olympic games and I, you know, got second. So you never know what's going to happen and you never know what swimmer is going to step onto those starting blocks that day, no matter what they've done in their past. I just love that, that she broke your American record. People don't realize, you know, not, not everyone has world and American records or records period, but when you do, it's a sacred moment. And when someone breaks it, you're bound, you're tied. There, there's a, there's an intimate connection. And, uh, I, I like that you're, you're, you know, you had an extra layer of, of, of an emotional moment when you were watching that race. I, I definitely did. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. It, so this, I'm going to, we, we, we got you on for a specific reason before I go there, just, just give us a preview. You know, when you get 12 Olympic medals, high demand, the Olympic games is crazy because of the pandemic, a lot of our icons won't be there. And if you get just for folks listening out, out there, you know, when you go to an Olympic games, you're walking around and it is the who's who of Olympic superstars, which of course includes Dara, but you, you do see everyone and uh, you're not going to be there. A lot of, Olymp a lot of Olympic superstars won't be there. What's What are you going to do during the Olympic games? Oh, I'll be watching them. I'll be glued. I won't be out of the country. I'll be glued to the TV set and just, cheering from afar. You know, like I said earlier in this podcast, 
you know, you, you have to feel a little bit for these athletes. I mean, yes, they're on the Olympic team. And I know that, that the, um, adrenaline comes from within, but there's just something, as you know, about the atmosphere and just Olympic games is completely different than anything you've ever competed in. So, you know, they have to sort of maybe self-motivate a little more than you would normally have to going into Olympic games, but I'm super psyched to watch. I think there's going to be some amazing races and, you know, as always, there's always someone young that's going to come up and do something that you never thought they were going to do. And then there'll be someone who's an excellent swimmer and always at the top of their game may not be at the top of the game. So there's always some type of surprises. The Olympics never go the way you think they're going to go. I just like the idea that 12 time Olympic medalist Dara Torres is going to be on the couch watching. <laughs> and, and I'm wondering, you know, are you going to like walk over to a friend's house and hang out on their couch? You know, who, who gets the 12 time Olympic medalist watching? Or is it just going to be, you know, you and the family, popcorn? I just, I just, that, I need that visual. I think it's just going to be me with the popcorn and probably my daughter. Uh, if I sit there with friends, they'll start asking me a thousand questions and I have to answer them. I'm like, everyone just be quiet. I need to watch this. And, you know, I, I like to sort of just enjoy it in my own environment and just really take in what everyone's doing and the amazing races that we're going to see. And, you know, my daughter just kind of sits next to me and we were psyched about trials and she was cheering at the you know, TV screen. And, and I don't think I've ever seen her so excited about a sporting event and she was loving it. So I'm excited to, to take that time to share that with my daughter. Well, let's, let's bring it back to the, the topic and the reason why we're here, because you've been, this is the third time you've been on the swim time podcast, but I, you know, I heard from your people, your peoples, <laughs> and uh, we know your peoples very well, but they, um, they something came up. They said, look, Dara's working with this company. It's, it's can I brands. And if you're listening to us right now, go to press pause, go to can, C A N I brands, B R A N D S dot com, can I brands dot com. And uh, this is a company with, with that, that is that is in the CBD business. And the reason why I'm, I'm excited about this is because I've been using CBD for years. Oh. I'm somebody who doesn't. Uh, I don't, I don't like to take aspirin or Tylenol. I never take opioids. If I've had minor surgery, I don't take pain medication, but you know, i so I suffer through as best I can, but I like CBD for, for that. I like it for anti-inflammatory. Um, so I just wanted to unpack this topic with you and I wanted to, I'm excited to have this opportunity. What, what is your relationship with the company? So I'm their brand ambassador at Can I Brands and, um, for me personally, I didn't know a lot about CBD. Uh, you know, I, I know it's becoming very popular on the market in the last couple of years. Uh, what happened to me is I had um, torn my quad muscle, my lateral quad muscle off of my bone. I had had knee surgery prior to that. And I think things were just weak in there and I had fallen on ice and I didn't know what I did. It took about a week to sort of figure out what happened, but I ended up having surgery, very painful surgery. And they had to reattach uh, the quad muscle and about two weeks in, you know, they give you narcotics and I can't take narcotics. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I don't like the way my stomach starts to hurt because of it. So I would just pop Tylenols. And, um, I, a couple of weeks went in my, my old, uh, strength coach had come into town. He works with hockey players and we had met at and seen him in a couple of years and, and we were sitting down for lunch and he'd asked me what had happened. I told him, he's like, how are you feeling? I'm like horrible. I said, I, this, this is, you know, really hurts. I feel like because I'm older, I'm not recovering as fast as I used to. One of the things that I sort of did well was recover quickly, no matter if it was surgery or whatever it was, I just always recovered. And so this was a little new area for me, not being able to recover quickly. And so he had said, well, what are you doing? I said, it's popping time. I was in Advil's. And he said, well, you know, I actually work with a CBD company that um, makes products that can help you mend faster. And I was like, really? I said, you sure? And he, he said, absolutely. And I said, well, do they make sleep product too? Cause I'm not sleeping very well either. And he's like, yeah, they do. And I, I, he goes, you want me to put you in touch with them? I said, that'd be great. So they sent me some, can I sleep and some, can I mend? And I started to um, use the mend cream and the sort of like a, they have a paste too, and started rubbing it on the area where I was in pain from the surgery. And I really started to see noticeable differences um, with the pain that I was having and how quickly it was improving after taking 
uh, the can I mend. And then on the can I sleep, I would take Ad Advil PM, Tylenol PM, melatonin, like all these different things to go to sleep. Because what happens when you get older, your hormones go down. And for women in particular, and I'm sure men too, it's a lot harder to fall asleep at night. And so they had sent me some, uh, can I, uh, can I sleep a uh, spray and oil and the spray works a little quicker. And I think the oil might be a little more concentrated and I tried it and I had literally the best night's sleep, like un undeniably like the best night's sleep I had had in years. And, um, and I was hooked and, and I said, Hey, is there any way I can be a part of this company or be a spokesperson? I said, I, I love your products. Like send me more. What else do you have? And they sent me, can I boost? I don't know if like after you have a long night, if someone goes out drinking or something like that the night before, as you know, um, <laughs> they, um, you can have a hard night, a hard time, um, you know, waking up in the morning. And uh, I personally, because of my hormones, uh, don't have a ton of energy when I get up. So I have, can I boost? And I can use that to sort of give me some energy during the day. And so there's, they have some really great products. There's no THC in it. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you about it is, as you know, with drug testing and with supplements, you can go to USADA, call USADA and say, hey, is this okay to take? Will I get in trouble for taking this? And if it's something that's over the counter or a prescri prescription, they'll say yes or no. But if it's a supplement, they always say, take it your own risk. And um, that's always scary for an athlete. You know, you don't know what to do. You don't know if there's something else in there that shouldn't be in there. With these Can I products, there's actually a lot of athletes that are starting to take this, this, these products. And um, they're tested all the time. They, they pass all the tests. You're not gonna you know, test positive for THC. There's no THC in it. Everything is all natural. And I stand by them. I mean, they're, they're great. And, and one of the things that I said when I signed up, or right before I signed up, when I talked to um, one of the owners, Chris Lord, I said, you know, if I'm gonna be a part of this, I have to know that, that if someone were to take it, they're gonna pass their drug tests. And he said, we have that all covered. We have athletes that are taken and we get it tested all the time to make sure, but, but they know exactly what's in the products. And I think the problem with supplements is, you know, you have a lab doing this. It may cross with another, some, another product that's being made and accidentally some gets in there. You know, you just don't know, but you know, with these products that they're safe to take. And that's very important because I'm very much about clean sport. And some CBD has some THC in it and, right. and you can test positive for it. And, and right before we're, 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 we're coming on the podcast, uh, news broke and it's, uh, the, the, the team USA hundred meter dash, the sprinter, huge star, mm -hmm. uh, over a million, like right at a million followers on Instagram, she's blowing up. Shakir and Richardson tested positive for THC and her backstory is that like her biological mother died. Uh, she found out about that. And I, I'm sure that she was using uh, what she was using for, for coping. Right. She tested positive. It's a 30 day ban. That's it. And that's, uh, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. You know what? It's a fine line. I mean, athletes know that if for some reason you're around someone who um, is smoking or, you know, taking weed or whatever they're doing, um, as an athlete, you know, and not that I'm promoting this, that you need to not do anything at least 30 days before there's drug testing at trials. And I'm sure she knew that she, she goes to LSU. Um, so they, I'm sure like all colleges have those meetings where the USADA comes in or, uh, someone who represents USADA and they talk about, you know, drug testing and what's good and bad for you. The one thing that I, I, it's hard to not argue this is you can't really enhance your performance with THC. I mean, you just can't, if anything, it will make you tired, not, not, you know, enhance your performance. And I had seen um, a couple cele celebrities, one in particular, Gabrielle Union, um, tweeting out about, you know, let her compete, that she didn't do anything that's going to boost her uh, performance. But on the other hand, you do know as an athlete that you can't take this stuff. And, you know, it's, it's too bad she couldn't hope, you know, find a different coping mechanism to help her you know, get through that rather than take the chance of doing something that, you know, you're not supposed to do, um, before competing at, at Olympic trials. And, and, and I should say that it's, we need to, we're, 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 we're we've read the news. We're making some assumptions. We don't know the entire story. Exactly. And I'm sure this story is going to evolve and there'll more details will come out, but it's, uh, it's tough. 
it is. What I do like about Can I Brands is that it, it is CBD. This isn't this isn't THC. Um, I've used a lot of different CBD products because it's uh, it's just something that I've I've used, and I'm I like it for anti-inflammatory, but I also like it because I'm not I'm I'm not going to say how old I am, but we're going to say we are of a certain age. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and I do get a good night's rest. And I don't like I don't like melatonin. I don't like sleeping pills. I don't like any of that. But I know that that in terms of your performance is that if you're still competitive or if you're an athlete or if you're an older athlete or you just want to have an active lifestyle, the best thing you can do for yourself is get a good night's rest. Absolutely. And I think there's really a big mix, misconception when people hear CBD, they assume that there's some type of THC in there and, and a lot of athletes won't try that. And you know, the, like I said, the great thing about this company is there's no THC in these products. And so, you know, they're safe and that's a very comforting feeling. It's um, so for folks listening out there, if you want to try this, there is a discount code DARA, D-A-R-A 30, DARA, D-A-R-A 30 for 30% off. So if you want to pause, go over to Can I Brands, C-A-N-I-B-R-A-N-D-S.com. You can plug in that code, get 30% off and, and do what Mel Stewart does, which is, you know, I, 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 I try things that, that are, that I'm curious about. Um, I didn't know that in terms of this, like their, their suite of, of, of products that they had, you know, I didn't know they had this much. I didn't know that you could go this deep into the cosmos of can I brands. So I'm yeah, going to, sorry, go ahead. No, I, I'm, I'm going to go check it out. Yeah, you should. They, like I said, they have, can I mend and can I repair, which helps with muscles, uh, you know, aches, pains, uh, that, that I love. And that's, they have oral and stuff that you can uh, rub on. They have, can I boost, which gives you energy. They have, can I sleep, which helps you go to sleep. And they also have, can I fresh, which a lot of athletes were actually a lot of hockey players were, uh, this is a Canadian company, um, that's, you know, branching out into the U S and all over the world. And, um, they, uh, have a lot of hockey players that were taking, can I fresh because, uh, there was a lot of anxiety going on during, uh, COVID and the lockdown and quarantine and the Can I Fresh was really helping these athletes with anxiety. So um, they have four fabulous products. Well, let's just go back to it just so people understand entirely. Can I Brands, C-A-N-I-B-R-A-N-D-S.com. Plug in your, your discount code, Dara, D-A-R-A-30, D-A-R-A-30 for the discount code. And you can also try it. Now, Derek, you're more than just a brand ambassador. You're the chief wellness officer. <laughs> Did you negotiate that title? I, that's a that's a cool no, title. You know, I just uh, I say one thing, and that's fine. I, I don't I don't like to like you know I don't know beat my horn, so that's okay. No, it's, I, 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 that's what I expect. I don't want to hold you too long. I know you got some things you got to do today, but it's um, I did want to bring it back to the Olympics, bring mm -hmm. it back to your family, and. Uh, is there, you know, I, I'm frankly, between you and I, I'm, I'm excited that we're having this moment. I feel like this summer, even, even with all of the controls and the way it's going to be with, with so few fans and parents can't go over. I know that from, as a media company, I know that we are stripped down to a very tiny team that can be present. Uh, from a personal standpoint, I feel like this, when, when we look back in terms of history, this is going to be a moment where the world celebrates. Like, hey, we got through the worst of the pandemic. And I feel like it's going to be a celebration. I hope that's the case. I hope so, too. I, I think everyone, you know, who's watching, not, you know, not live, obviously, um, you know, I, I, I wish that they could see all the people that are going to be watching and cheering them on, because I think it's going to be a huge celebration around the world. You know, as you know, this is an event where the best athletes from all over the world compete. And it's the only time that you really get this chance to be against everyone in the world. And, um, and it's, and it's a huge platform and, and very nerve wracking. Uh, but the one thing that I think the U S uh, has going for them is Olympic trials, as you know, I think is, much more difficult and much more nerve wracking than the Olympic games. So they've gotten through the toughest part. They have five to six weeks to get ready for uh, the Olympic games. And I think we're gonna see a lot of fast swimming from, from our US contingency. And I'm, I'm very psyched to see how the young and the old do. I, I think we're gonna see some great swims.
You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.